everyone. Welcome to Paul Painting with Ron. I hope you've been really well since the last time we saw each other. Well, what sort of painting are we going to be doing today? Well, a client asked me to do like a variation of a bloom pour idea, but to make like a, a feathery sort of painting. I'll put a picture up on here somewhere so you can see an example of the sort of thing I'm playing with today but this customer wanted something in greens and blues perhaps alternating greens and blues on a white background now uh, it's going to be a bit of an experiment today just to see how things work if it works out okay you'll see the video and as you can see in the thumbnail you can probably see how the, the painting turned out anyway at the end anyway so what sort of canvas are we using today well, today I'm using this um, large thin edge canvas, 40 by 80 centimeters. It's a thin edge, and like I usually do, I've taped the back with some painter's tape, put in some giant push pins to keep it off the surface of the table, and I've made sure the canvas was nice and tight so my paint doesn't pool into the middle. Now, um, if you've seen one of my bloom paintings before, um, you'll be familiar with the, the steps and the materials that I use but this technique I'm changing things up a little bit rather than using a house paint for my pillow and spinning it out I'm going to use just ordinary acrylic paint mixed with Floetrol and a bit of water so I'm using a Montmartre titanium white and I'm mixing that one part paint to one part Floetrol and a little bit of water to get the consistency that I want and that'll be the base for my painting and I'll tilt it out a bit first before I put the other colors on I won't be spinning it today okay so I, I think I ended up with about 800 grams of mixed paint altogether if it isn't enough I'll just mix a little bit more now the color layer I'll put the recipe on the side here so you can see all the exact measurements um, but it's a combination of paint and pouring medium and the pouring medium I'm using is a mix of untinted um, low sheen paint. Um, I'm using the extra bright untinted low sheen paint. And I mix that with um, varnish, polyurethane varnish. I'm using the Joe Sonia's brand. Choose one that isn't going to go yellow on you over time. And you mix your pouring medium with the colours. Now, before, I've only used Joe Sonia's colours in my paintings, but today I'm going to use some Deco Art Extreme Sheen ones as well, just to see how they go. I've just mixed up a little bit, so if they don't work, I haven't wasted a lot. But if they do work well in the painting, I'm sure to use them a lot more. So the Joe Sonia's colours I'm using are um, Green Light, some... Aqua, sort of an in-between green blue. I thought maybe tie the green and the blue together a bit. Um, some ultramarine blue. And a bit of rich gold. And the extreme sheen colours I'm using by Deco Art are um, sapphire and emerald. If it works out the way I imagine it, it should be should be nice but they, they are really reactive paints so I'm not sure how they're going to react with all the other paints I'm using today if it's yuck I'll just scrape off the canvas and do it again without using the extreme sheens okay oh and then the top layer of course to get my lovely lacing effects if all goes to plan is a mix of Floetrol and Amsterdam acrylic titanium white you can use any color um, Amsterdam paint that you like but Amsterdam is a brand that works really well with uh, the flow troll and I'm mixing that one part paint to two parts flow troll okay let's get started right hey, we're back now my first step is to coat my canvas in white I do want to leave a reasonable amount in the sort of like the middle of the canvas so I can um, stretch perhaps my design out a little bit not too sure how it will work but uh, we'll go with the flow as they say now my my mix is 
reasonably thin, but, but not extremely thin. So if I do a, a twirl with my spoon like that, the bump stays there for about three seconds or so before it disappears. Now if I was doing a normal swipe, I'd have it a bit thinner. But this one I want to use a bit, a bit thicker perhaps so that uh, my paint doesn't sink. Now I do hope I have enough. Okay, I'll get my palette knife. I do want to stretch it out a bit if I can. So I'll leave a fair chunk of paint in the center of the canvas but the edges will just go right out to the edge like that I thought that would probably work famous last words but we'll see just like that It's thicker than I normally have it. And I'll just cover my sides a bit too. This is the messy bit. And I'll just move this around a bit. I think I've left enough there to do some stretching later on just to stretch my design out a bit oh where's my cloth all right Ooh, I hope this works all right now the design is going to be portrait style going like this way you're looking at it side on so just keep that in mind. Just give it a torch. Pop some air bubbles. Now I hope I haven't left too much paint on the canvas. But I did want some so I could stretch it out. Alright, now we want sort of like a feather, feather effect. I thought I would start maybe with the mid color, this this color. Just got it in these squeezy bottles, last forever. Maybe just do a, a general sort of wave. Maybe that general idea.
Okay. And then I might do some gold. I don't want to overdo the gold. Alright, now I have to think a bit about the other colours because I do want to like alternate between green and, and blue a little bit, not just have it all together. Um, I might start with some of the blue. And then I might do some So, and then some of this um, lovely extreme sheen on the top. green on this side and then some of my nice extreme sheen green Some gold like that. Now, let me see. I'm just contemplating what I'm going to do. And I, well, we'll see what how that works, shall we? If it doesn't, then I will just scrape it off and do it again, as they say. All right. Now. The swiping part, I'm using my mix of Amsterdam paint and Floetrol. As I said, one part Amsterdam paint to two parts Floetrol. And I'll swipe it out over the colours using these playing cards. Now I'll use the thin edge because I do want to do some leafy shapes. And then I'll use other tools like this stick and stuff just to make it like feathery and wispy looking when I'm done. All right, so I've got a paint scraper tool here and I'll pour my swiping color on there and then dip the card on like so. I might start at the bottom. scary. I just find this this bit scary. Okay. I'll be off camera for a bit.
It's a bit droopy. Mm. If your card gets a bit wet and bendy, just turn it around and do the other side. Lots of paint there. Interesting. Get rid of that blob before I do anything else. Okay. Ooh, now I do want to stretch it a little bit, but not not so much that it wrecks my design. I'm going to be able to do it too much. No, I think I'll just have to leave a lot of paint on the canvas. If I'm going to do it again, I'll have less paint on there. A lot of that's going to flatten itself out. But I can remove some of 
this excess white this way If you leave too much paint on the canvas, there's a risk of it cracking when it dries. So I'll just remove some this way that I was planning on tipping off. Okay, I think that's where the bulk of it was. It will flatten itself out. As it dries. Okay, and I'll see if I can play around with the, the skewer a little bit because I do want to make it a bit more feathery, feathery looking. So I'm just using the blunt end of the skewer. Now this is the bottom of the thing, so I'll just run it through. center where the center was okay now Ooh. where to start like big blobs of colour anywhere. Now this should smooth out okay. Okay. Cool. Now I'll give it a bit of a torch. Just to pop some air bubbles and encourage maybe some more cell action.
Okay. Oh, that's nice. I I like it. I hope the customer likes it likes it too. Cool. I'll bring you in for a closer look. So here we go, the finished painting. I'll just go turn it around. This is what it's this is the way it's going to go. So I'll bring you in for a closer look. We can see lots of lovely lacing and cell action happening. That's the top. Let's bring you out a bit more. And you can see the overall effect there. So, what did you think of that one? Is that a technique you'd like to try? Um, I think mine turned out really well. Perhaps if I was doing it again, I'd start off with leaving less paint, a little bit less paint on the canvas because, yeah, the tilting wasn't as successful as perhaps I would have liked it to be. But I think the overall result is really good. And if um, the paint doesn't crack as it dries, it should flatten out and look really nice. The extreme sheens will really come into their own too when the painting dries and is varnished. I'd like to have a go with the extreme sheens and a regular bloom pour just to see what happens there. I've got some nice colours and it'd be nice to use them in a combination with the Joe Sonia's just to see if I can create some more interesting effects. You might see them in a forthcoming video. Well, it's time for me to clean up, unfortunately, and time for you to go. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please take a moment to press the like button. Um, and if you'd like to see more of my content, please take a moment to subscribe and click the notification bell. I hope you have a, a really good week ahead and I look forward to seeing you again next time. In the meantime, happy painting.